Now we are talking about units of concentration. We're going to be looking at solutions, and in order to describe those solutions, we want to think about how much concentration they have to them. So in order to understand something about concentration, we need to be able to look at a solution, which is what we have right here. Here's a solution of sugar water, and we need to know what the different parts to that solution are. So for example, in our sugar water solution, we have the solute, which is our sugar. The solute is always going to be in smaller amounts. And you don't have this on your notes. If you just kind of want to jot this down somewhere, it might be helpful. But the solute is in smaller amounts, whereas the solvent is always going to be in larger amounts. Just like the words themselves, solvent's larger than solute. And then the solute is what's being dissolved. So what is being dissolved, whereas the solvent does the dissolving. Okay, so it might be helpful, even though you don't have to really label it, but you, when you read through these problems, you might want to think to yourself, be able to identify which one's the solute, which one's the solvent. And really all we're going to be doing is using some formulas that help us describe the concentration of that solution. And yes, you should know these, but they're all pretty easy. So we're going to start off with something that you're probably already familiar with. If we start looking for percent, remember percent is always going to be some sort of part divided by whole. So in this case, we're looking at percent by mass. Well, that means it's going to be measured in grams right, since it's by mass, and it's of the part, just the solute, divided by the whole entire thing, which would be your solution. So part divided by whole, if it's percent by mass, grams of solute divided by grams of solution, you multiply it times 100. When you get your final answer on something like this, what are your units going to be in? What are you going to have behind the number? Percent. That's all you're going to see behind that number, is percent. Um, let me also mention that here we're saying it's the grams of the solute, but there's no reason you couldn't find percent by mass of your solvent. You could easily go through the process for that as well and do your grams of your solvent divided by grams of the entire solution. Um, which brings me to the fact that you do have quite a bit of problems there on your homework, and the reason being we, we kind of played around with it and we thought that you really need to have those 20 problems to practice because none of these are just exactly alike. They're not little cookie cutters. They're, um, they, they change them up a little bit to where you have to really read carefully through there and see what it is that you're solving for. So I think you need a lot of those to practice. Okay, next one we want to look at is mole fraction. So since it's mole fraction instead of some sort of mass fraction, we're looking at moles. It's symbolized with an X, and then you use a subscript to identify what substance you're getting the mole fraction of. So here, if it's the mole fraction of A, then that means it's going to be the moles of substance A divided by the moles of the entire thing, which would be your moles of your whole solution. So again, it's part divided by whole, but in this case, it's moles. It's not mass. Um, there's no reason that A couldn't be your solute. There's no reason it couldn't be the solvent. You could go through and do it for either of those. So if you took moles divided by moles, what are you going to get for your units? Ah, not moles. There are no units, right? Moles divided by moles would give you no units. They would cancel out. And then um, finally, our last one that we have here on the top of our sheet is for molality. And if you recall, a while back we said, hey, when learning about molarity, make sure you use that really exaggerated big capital M, because later on we're going to come along and use a little itty bitty M for molality. Well, that's the time that we're doing it is right now. So molality is, the numerator is the same as it is for molarity. It's still moles of your solute. But now instead of it being divided by liters, of your whole entire solution, it's going to be divided by kilograms of just the solvent. So as you practice through these, you'll get to the point to where you just memorize them. Okay, so we just have some examples that we're going to go through. I threw the uh, formulas up at the top so we can kind of refer to those. First one, it tells us we have 25 grams 
of sugar that is dissolved in 165 grams of water. Even if you don't physically label this on your paper, you ought to at least be thinking about it in your head. Sugar is going to be classified as what? Solute. Whereas your water is going to be your solvent. So somehow you ought to at least be thinking about that because that's going to help you with those formulas. Well, on this one, it's kind of weird the way it phrases it. It just says, what is the percentage concentration? Hopefully you can identify it as that first one. It's going to have something to do with percent. So we're going to be looking at percent by mass. And it's not real clear as to what substance we want that um, percentage for, but typically you do it for the solute. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do it for both, but we have to at least do it for the solute. So if I want to figure out my solute, the stuff that's being dissolved. So in this case, I'm going to say my percent is equal to, and this is by mass, so it's going to be the grams of my solute. And the way I'm going to uh, uh, abbreviate these, SOL is solute, SOLV is solvent, and SOLN is solution. So I'm going to take the grams of my solute, and I'm going to divide them by the grams of my entire solution times 100%. Okay, grams of our solute, do we know that? Yep. So 25 divided by, what should we do? Add them together. So the 25 plus the 165, because these guys together give us our solution. So that's going to be 190, and there, that would be three sig figs there. So 190 um, grams for our solution. And what we just did was we did this for the sugar. So when we get this answer, anybody get an answer to three sig figs? Okay. 13.2% sugar. So if you were looking at the, in this solution, it is a 13.2% sugar solution, meaning the rest of it is water. We could go through that same process of what we just did over here. In other words, it would be the 165 over 190. But instead of going through that, what else might you just do? Subtract it. And we get 86.8% water. You know, that's vague enough that I think it's probably best to do it for both. It's easy enough to do it for both. You definitely have to do it for your sugar. But I'd prefer to see it. On a test or a quiz, it would definitely be spelled out for you as to what's expected. Okay, next one. It says if the molar mass of the sugar, in the same example, is 342.3 grams per mole, what is the mole fraction of the sugar in the above solution? And also, what is the mole fraction of the water in that solution? So we're looking for mole fraction of both our solute and our solvent. So I'm going to start with my sugar. And I know that my mole fraction is going to be the moles of my solute. So do I know the moles of my solute? Okay, good. So you've got your 25 grams that's given to you in your, um, your first example. So 25 grams of sugar. We see that the molar mass is 342.3 grams for every one mole. So we can get an answer. And I'm going to go ahead and report it to three sig figs. You should get 0 0.0730 moles. So all we did was just figure out the moles of our solute. If you look back at your formula, it's going to be moles of solute divided by moles of the entire solution. We can't really do that yet until we figure out the moles of our solvent so that we can then add them together. So our water, there was 165 grams. Excellent. 18.02 grams for every one mole means that we have 9.16 moles. Where did 
that came, it's all from the previous problem. So we just started with these values. Our 25 grams for our sugar and our 165 grams for our water. Okay, so now we've got it to this point. We've got moles of each of these. This is for our sugar and this is for our water. Now if we want to start with our sugar again, I'm going back to my sugar. I want to figure out the mole fraction of my sugar. So that's going to be equal to the moles of the sugar, which is right there, 0 0.0730 divided by the moles of the entire thing, so you know what to do there, you add these guys together, and you get 9.233, I probably had that in my calculator, just um, our appropriate number of sig figs though, it's really just 9.23, then when you go through and do that math, you get 0 0.00, 791. What units should I put down there? Nothing. We do the same thing for our water. So for our water, it's going to be our moles of our water, which is our solvent in this case. So it's going to be that 9.16 divided by 9.23, and we get um, 0 0.99. And I was just going to ask that, and you just answered it. So the qu uh, comment was, do they add up to 1? And yes, they do. So these are mole fractions. We know, just like in our previous example, these um, the percentages add up to 100%. With mole fraction, that should add up to 1. Okay. Let me see if there's any questions. Okay, so we just had a question about significant figures, and the answer was that it's going to be three sig figs because we've got three sig figs in the given problem, so our answer should be to three significant figures. Okay, next one. Here we are calculating molality. We're going to start mixing these up. Molality and molarity look really similar when you're reading tiny itty bitty print and you've got a lot of homework problems and stuff. So really look at that carefully and make sure you're reading it correctly. But we're calculating molality, so we know it's going to be this formula. Molality equals moles divided by kilograms. And that's it. So I do need to know that this is moles of my solute and my kilograms are for my solvent, but with practice you'll get that. So all we're going to do here is we're going to say that our moles, do you guys, is it, can you find that or do we need to calculate it? Okay, good. So you can find we've got our moles of our solute is 0 0.0730. What about our water? Kilograms. It's just the solvent, not the whole solution. So this one's a little bit different. This is just of our water. So we, yeah, we know that there's 165 grams of it. So therefore we know. 0 0.165 kilograms. Now this is the one that doesn't have the whole entire solution in the denominator for this. And we get 0 0.442 moles per kilogram. Yeah, okay, so the question is, do you just write a little M for that? And the answer is, you could write this as your answer, or you could say 0 0.442 little itty bitty M. Molality is what that's referring to. Okay, so our next one, it says, how many grams of a 3% saline solution must be measured out to get 0.25 grams of solute? So, can you guys identify which formula you would use on this? Yeah. I think you guys can see it's going to be that one. It's, yeah, our percent by mass. So, I'm going to simplify it and just say our percent is equal to our grams of our solute divided by grams of the entire solution times 100%. Now notice that what we're doing is we're looking to figure out how many grams of this solution must be made. So I'm not solving for the percent, I'm looking for grams. 
which means the easiest way to tackle the math on these is divide each side by 100 right up front. If you divide this side by 100, that gets rid of that. If you divide this side by 100, then what that does is it decimalizes, which is a real word, a very cool word, decimalizes. So all you're doing is moving that decimal point over two to the left and getting rid of that percent sign. Okay. Um, so if we plug in, instead of writing down 3.0%, we're going to write down what? There. Um, actually, like that to get us our two sig figs. So we're going to have 0 0.030 is equal to, do we know the grams of our solute? Okay, divided by, and it really doesn't matter, something I hear, so let's just call that something X. So, in this case, it's just, <laughs> guys itching to do a dimensional analysis. You are welcome to, to um, try and figure out a way to do this in dimensional analysis. I welcome that. Um, I would personally just use this formula and solve for x. So if you want to just throw it over 1 to cross multiply, whatever you need to do, your x ends up being, if I get an answer, good. And that should be, in this case, it's to two significant figures because both of those are two. And that's grams of our solution, our entire solution. So, again, a couple things for you to think about as you're going through and doing these problems. Notice this said how many grams of this percent saline solution must be measured out. Maybe it asks something about just the solvent. So maybe you have to go and think about what you've got here and do some adding, subtracting, whatever it might be. So you have to really read through these problems carefully. Okay. Number five, this is a fun one here. It says, how many grams of methanol must be dissolved in 250 milliliters of water to produce a 0.325 molal solution? So this is just the adjective form of molality. So we know we're going to use this. A couple different ways we can do this. We can do it through algebra, but I know that you guys really want to do dimensional analysis on this. So we're going to do it both ways because I kind of want you to see how it works with both of that, um, those. So we said molality is equal to moles per kilogram. Read through that problem. Actually, before we even do, let's just identify what are our variables. What is methanol? What do you want to label that guy? Sol. Lute, okay? So there's the solute, and water is solvent. So that's in our mind. We're going to need to think about that as we go through this problem. So based on that, and based on our formula that we have right here, moles, molality equals moles per kilogram, moles of your solute divided by kilogram of your solvent. What is it that we're going to solve for? Which of these three variables are we going to need to solve for? I heard two answers. I heard three answers. <laughs> okay. We are going to end up solving for our moles. So real quick, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention why that is in a second, but I'm going to change this formula around algebraically and say moles equals kilograms times our molality. Now the reason is we know molality. It's given to us, 0.325 molal solution, and it's water. If you know the, the volume of water, you know the mass of water. Why? Because you guys, we are assuming um, standard temperatures and pressures. You guys are citizens on this earth, therefore you know the density of water. Everybody in this room knows it. <laughs> One gram per what? Okay, cubic centimeter or milliliter. So if that's the density of water, then if you have 250 milliliters of water, you have 
250 grams. So you could easily convert that to kilograms. This only works because we know it's water. If it wasn't water, if it was a different liquid, you'd have to be told the density of that liquid and such. We're not going to really go there. Don't worry about that. It's not grams per liter. We usually... No, we were using grams per liter with uh, gases because those gas molecules spread out so much. But t with all other substances, we usually go with grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. So now that we've got this set up, I've used algebra to change this around. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of take on the dimensional analysis route. If I had one unit or two units, remember you would never put the little itty bitty M, you don't put the big capital M in dimensional analysis, which one would you prefer to start with, one or two units? One unit. So we're going to start with our kilograms. So we're going to say that this equals 0 0.2500 kilograms. We want the kilograms to cancel and we want to solve for moles. So get rid of the kilograms and go to moles. You know that there are 0 0.325 moles for every one kilogram. That's what this says. Point three to five moles for every one kilogram. So we just set that up with dimensional analysis, but really we just followed the algebra. The algebra tells us to get to moles, all you do is multiply those two things together, same thing. But we're not quite done because the question said, how many grams? So we have moles of methanol, easily get rid of your moles and go to grams of methanol. One mole has a mass of 32.05 grams. So, again, dimensional analysis worked out perfectly for us. And they're punching away frantically in their calculators, but I'm going to go ahead and write it down. 2.60 grams of methanol is what you should get. Okay, last one that we have and an additional concept here. As a chemistry teacher, I use this one all the time because I might be doing a lab where I say, okay, I need 1,500 milliliters of 8 molar solution. So I go to the stock room and I find the 12 molar solution of hydrochloric acid that I have to dilute down and I have to figure out if I want 1,500 milliliters of this, how much of this more concentrated stuff do I have to start with in order to dilute it down to this lesser concentration at this volume. So it's just a dilution problem. So dilution is just reducing the concentration of a solution by adding more solvent. The typical case is by adding water. And um, the formula is just M times V in one situation equals M times V in a second situation. Um, just a proportion, really, is how you're setting that up. So if you have this first problem here, the only problem we have on it, a commercial ammonia solution is labeled 7.4 molar. How many liters of this solution are needed to prepare 2.5 liters of a 3 molar solution? What is my answer going to be? I'm going to be looking for volume. Is that volume going to be greater than or less than 2.5? Less than. Yeah. So I need to be starting with a smaller amount of my more concentrated solution, and I'm going to get a larger amount of it, but it's going to be less concentrated. So you really just need to then plug it in. The way I interpret this, I'm going to call that volume and molarity in my second situation. That's how I read through that. But if you read through that and you called it your first situation, it wouldn't matter at all. You'd still get the same answer as long as you put these into the same uh, situation. So that is what we are starting with. So we just plug it all in. Uh, that's going to be 7.4 molar times our volume is equal to 3.0 molar times 2.5 liters. If it gave you, it to you in milliliters, that would be fine. Just your units need to be consistent. And anybody get an answer? Kind of a funny answer. 
1.0. That's all you get. So 1.0 liters is our final answer. That is all.